The African Union has condemned France for supplying weapons to Libyan rebels. Its chief said the move threatens to put the entire region at risk. On Wednesday, France became the first NATO country to openly admit to arming tribal fighters who are striving to topple Colonel Gaddafi. Rebels have recently been making gains and hope to advance on Tripoli. But for more on this, uh, we're joined now by John Lachlan, the director for the Institute of Democracy and Cooperation in Paris. Uh, thanks for joining us here on RT. Uh, France is uh, once again at the forefront of NATO's campaign in Libya, now airdropping weapons to the rebels. Uh, some analysts say the move contravenes the UN embargo on arms supplies to Libya. What's your take on that? Uh, well, obviously it does, and uh, it also makes a nonsense of the whole uh, argument in favour of uh, the war in the first place. That argument, as you know, was predicated on the idea, uh, on the accusation that the Libyan government was attacking civilians. Well, the admission that France is arming the rebels is very obviously an admission that what's going on in Libya is a fight between the government and armed rebels. And armed rebels are not civilians. So any attack by the government on armed rebels in Libya is therefore not necessarily a war crime. In other words, this news uh, is not only incompatible with the case that's being made for war in Libya, it completely contradicts it. Incompatible, but are other countries likely to follow in, in France's footsteps in terms of arming rebels, do you think? Well, Britain, uh, of course, is giving money to them, and uh, presumably they're using that money uh, for uh, certain purposes. I don't imagine they're giving it to charity. Um, and uh, it's quite possible that other countries are, uh, I'm thinking, of course, of the United States, are giving other forms of support uh, or possibly arms uh, covertly. Uh, so there is no doubt that the three countries, Britain, France and America, who are waging this war, uh, under the disguise of NATO, uh, of course, a wish to see the rebels seize power by force and overthrow Gaddafi. Yes. Uh, you, you mentioned NATO there. It does seem hell-bent on a military solution while ignoring uh, peaceful initiatives expressed by both Russia and the African Union. Why is that? Absolutely. Uh, again, uh, NATO, uh, like the main belligerent powers, of which, of course, it is uh, nothing but an instrument, has said in its most recent official communiques that the purpose of this war is to effect regime change, is to overthrow the government. Uh, and uh, quite obviously, they know that that can only occur by force. Uh, so indeed, NATO is proving to be a force for war, while uh, the regional countries, uh, the regional organizations, the African Union, as you say, and also Russia, have called for peace. On the other hand, uh, we must be careful about using the word NATO. Uh, this war is being fought by Britain, France and America. They use NATO as their uh, fig leaf. But NATO itself is, of course, much bigger and there is not unanimity in NATO. Uh, only a few days ago, the Italian foreign minister said that there should be a ceasefire in order to allow humanitarian aid through. So I think that this latest news from France will possibly increase tensions within the coalition. Uh, although I repeat that the war is being waged by three countries using NATO as a disguise. Now, the International Criminal Court has issued an arrest warrant on Colonel Gaddafi for crimes committed against his own people. While no one seems to be that worried about civilian casualties uh, in airstrikes uh, from NATO, uh, what's going on there then? Is that fair? Well, the, United, the International Criminal Court has once again, uh, and like the existing ad hoc tribunals, showed itself to be a blatantly political um, organization. Uh, the prosecutor only yesterday received a delegation from the Libyan rebels, uh, and uh, just as he has shown no interest whatever in the wars in Iraq or Afghanistan, so, as you suggest in your question, he is showing no interest whatever either in the civilian deaths which have been caused and admitted uh, by NATO itself. So his uh, indictment and the confirmation of it by the judges is one more proof that this organization is nothing but a judicial wing of NATO. It's a political court that issues indictments according to political imperatives. And of course, by doing so, it brings the whole notion of international justice uh, into very obvious disrepute. If you use courts for political purposes, uh, just as if you use the United Nations for political purposes, as NATO is also doing, then uh, you bring the notion, the very founding notions of those uh, organizations into disrepute. And I don't think anybody uh, outside London, Paris and Washington uh, give the slightest bit of credence now uh, to anything that uh, comes out of The Hague.
Okay, John Lachlan from the Institute of Democracy and Cooperation in Paris. We'll have to leave it there for now. Thank you.